on June 7th, day three, thousands of Firestone workers fled their homes. Steve Ramo took these photos. Many of the workers sought shelter at Ensminger's mansion. We started to see people walk towards the house. And like who's that? And then more, then more, and we estimated somewhere around 1,500 people were standing in front of the general manager's house seeking refuge. They were crying, they were afraid, and they wanted refuge. Many of the expats, too, gathered at the main house. We would, uh, during the day, kind of try and keep ourselves occupied. So I still played golf. <laughs> Some of the other guys did, too. And um, we just watched to see what would occur. We were hoping that once they had had this initial uh, battle, that things would move off the plantation. That was my hope, anyway. As the battle raged, Firestone workers continued to seek refuge at the main house. But Ensminger says he had no other choice but to turn them away. They told us that we cannot. He cannot take us in because we are the ones who will be protecting him, not he protecting us. He said, it's Liberians that are coming. You are going to be safe among your own people. You don't need to come in. So only the experts, only the expats can come in, not the Liberian staff. It made me feel very bad that uh, that present management did not care about the well-being of the black staff. You know, hell was breaking loose, and they didn't care for them. We were concerned about them because certainly being a part of the tribe that Doe was a part of, we knew that they were going to be targeted. But as far as being able to protect them, we had no way to do that. It was a very emotional moment to say to all these people, I'm sorry. We cannot harbor you, we cannot uh, protect you. Oh, I felt like crying. It was sad, very sad. In fact, I get choked up, like I'm nearly getting choked up now each time I tell this story. And, um, and it was very emotional. 